India, a country of diversity, bound together by its timeless philosophy. A philosophy evolved 5,000 years ago and passed on through generations, faithful to its concepts. The emphasis is to maintain order on the earth and in the universe through certain precepts, the prime one being dharma, the absolute concept of righteousness and duty. The path of dharma begins at birth, when a person's particular destiny is decreed by the stars and the planets. A series of rituals conducted according to the traditions or some scars of his community ascertain an auspicious beginning. According to Indian philosophy, a person's life is divided into four stages. The first is Brahmacharya, the period where he as a student must devote his time to the pursuit of knowledge, the time where he gets acquainted with his dharma. When in ecology we discuss intergenerational equity, and there the Grathashma clearly said that one generation should take the traditions of the earlier generation and hand it on to the next one. Our model clearly says that there is a brahmacharya period that is pursuit of full knowledge, which is not just celibacy, abstinence and so on. They made a distinction between Brahma Vidya and Vidya. All that universities can teach is primarily Vidya. It is useful up to a point. Vedas don't reject this material world, but it doesn't end there. That is to say, it accepts the material world and it accepts also the necessity to enrich it both materially and spiritually. After the Brahmacharya or student stage, a person became a householder or grihas. As he married and took over the family, his parents relinquished their position and retired from all household rituals. Uh, the, our philosophy prescribes vanaprasth as an idea. People know how to get involved in life, in many things in life, but they become bandhan, they become a burden. And then finally, in the case of those few who are highly evolved and who have the yogyata for it, you can become a sannyasi. The ghats or steps at Varanasi, on the banks of the holy river Ganges, is where every Hindu would like his cycle of life to end. For it is believed that one who dies here attains instant moksha or salvation. Paul Kennedy in his highly regarded book, The Rise and Fall of the Great Powers, estimates that at one time India had a monopoly of over 25% of world trade. Insistence on consumer protection ensured goods of a very high quality. Somewhere along the centuries, this concept of dharm seems to have been forgotten perhaps because of exploitation by those who were unfamiliar with it and took advantage. But there is a revival. India is once again realizing that when its people come together, it can be a huge economic force. With 55% of buffaloes in the world population in India. At Anand, Gujarat, a state in Western India, two million farmers spread over 12 districts, together form the world's largest and most successful Milk Cooperative Amul. When we talk about cooperative, for example, you can have a dairy which is run by a multinational company. It may be a very good dairy. Maybe it's run very well. But it is not, in my view, as beautiful as a dairy which is run by the elected representatives of the people themselves, or the farmers themselves. Whether the future gives them the right opportunities or not, is still a big question. But it is a small stirring that has arisen in the minds of the people. To look back and take inspiration from the past, to look at the present and recognize its shortcomings, and to look at the future with renewed strength and hope in Dharma. Jana Gana Mana, the people, the community, the power of their mind. Thank you.